In today's video, we're gonna tour a brand new school bus conversion home. And when I say brand new, I really mean it because when I arrived, the family had just finished converting the school bus and they were getting ready to move in and start their new adventure. I think you'll find it really interesting to see how they designed the layout to accommodate their two very young children, including an adorable bunk space, a car seat area for when the bus is moving, safety first, and storage for their impressively downsized toy collection. I think it really showcases what you need and what you don't necessarily need when it comes to raising babies in a schoolie. So, let's take a tour. Hi, I'm Ben. Hi, I'm Mia, and this is Sanctuary, AK Frank. Ben and I met in Seattle. Then we moved to Sweden for two years because we were waiting for my green card. When we were living in Sweden, we built a tiny house out of an old job site trailer. Unfortunately, we didn't live in it, but we sold it so that we could come here. A school seemed like the next thing for us to do because we wanted to see the country. We're going to be living in the bus with our 9-month-old Nora, our 23-month-old Silas, and our dog Desmond. We purchased the bus while we were still in Sweden. A couple near Albuquerque actually had bought it and started demoing and converting it to a schoolie, so we didn't have to do hardly any demo work. It took us over a month and a half to decide how to do the layout. We did so many iterations of it. So that was a really tricky part of the build. We worked on the bus and built the bus mostly ourselves with a little bit of help from everyone in the family. A little bit of help from the toddler even. Yeah. It definitely helped building a tiny house before the bus, just figuring out all the intricacies of a tiny space and all of the details you have to think about. It was a lot more fun to work on the schoolie actually. This is Sanctuary the Bus, we usually call him Frank. He's a Thomas built MVP safety liner 2001 with a cat engine. It runs really well, we had some work done on it before we transported it from Albuquerque, New Mexico actually. We found it on Craigslist, it was the best option that we found while we were in Sweden and we actually made the transaction while we were in Sweden and then picked it up after we bought it. We bought it for 11000 spent maybe about that on the rest of the build. Frank is 31 feet long. He was already painted white. The previous owner removed all the windows, put the metal panel over the windows, and installed new custom RV windows. We went back and forth with the color scheme. At first we wanted an angled section in the front and then have the lines go back, but we thought that Frank wasn't that complicated and he was kind of just a simple guy. It actually took one weekend to paint it. We had the help from my brothers and their partners, and we taped it off, did the green, and then had to wait a little bit to do the yellow because of rain. I think it turned out pretty nicely. This was actually the wheelchair access. It was a transit bus to begin with. So next phase is putting a slide out deck and extend our kitchen a little bit. Currently we have four panels, they're about 200 watt panels each. I built a steel frame that is connected to these stainless steel rails on the bus. And eventually I'll be able to tilt them by undoing bolts on either side. Next phase is to add two more panels on the back. So we have a little over a kilowatt of solar up there to charge our, our battery bank and solar generator. So we have a 75 gallon freshwater tank um, on the back side of the bus and then on this side of the bus we have a 50 gallon gray water tank. We have two just grill propane bottles 
um, for the stove and water heater. We'll never have to plug in. We will have to buy propane and fill up on water, but electricity will all be taken care of. Like I said, we have a cat engine. I forget the size or model, but we had some work done on the, the radiator. They rebuilt it actually. It was gunked up with everything. Spent almost 3,000 to do some engine work. I've never worked on a diesel this large. I've done some, some <laughs> mechanic work on smaller vehicles, but it is a little daunting. Come on inside, we'll give you a tour. This is the control panel where I'll be spending most of my time. I'm an architect and my wife right now, she's a copywriter. So a lot of computer work, we can do that on the road. The Blue Eddy by Max Oak sits nicely behind the driver's seat where at night I'll be using it to power my, my laptop and two monitors, which I'm working on a desk, sort of a, a desk that sits over the wheel with a keyboard here and that'll be nice not to draw juice from our main batteries and we can also take that outside for when we want to sit on a blanket and work on the laptop. In order to charge this, you can either plug it into solar with the MC4 connections and it's sort of an all-in-one charging system that has different components that plug into it. And you can plug it into a wall outlet or plug it in to a DC outlet. We actually just finished constructing the bus and I actually used this to power a shop vac and a sander while we were doing the flooring. One more thing I really like about it is that it's super lightweight, compact. It's an all-in-one system, so there's no complicated wiring, and it fits right behind my driver's seat. This is our solar cabinet. Over here we have the inverter, lithium batteries from a Nissan LEAF there, and then we have another stack down here. It was really daunting initially when I was doing the solar research. So we have three seat belts currently. I have two more that I'm installing as well as D-links for the car seat connections, but we'll have two car seats with the seat belts and anchor points. We kept this really open so that everyone can see out the front while we're driving. We wanted to go with like a natural forest inspired vibe. And then kind of the pink accents came from that because we just thought it was a really nice combination. Kids areas here, we got kids toys, cloth diapers, books. They're actually both diaper free, so that's really nice. We don't have to worry about doing laundry in our tiny little hand powered washer every day. It was really nice to just be able to get rid of all of the plastic stuff that people have given to us and all the stuff that they didn't really like anymore and just be very minimalistic with our toy collection. I think that I'm just going to be rotating toys, so I'll have some out, and then when they get bored with those, I'll put those away and um, bring out some new ones. This is our dwarf stove from Tiny Wood Stove, and we're actually going to stop by them in Idaho, and that's our first stop, because we're going to switch out the enamel door. So we first got this one, but then we felt like we needed something lighter for the space, so they welcomed us to come by and just exchange it. So it's not installed yet. We're gonna pick up some parts for it in our chimney and, and, and all that stuff. So the kids' chairs will go here and hook onto this table. And then this table comes up um, and we have two bar stools that are gonna go here. All this wood paneling was actually in it when we bought the bus, but we painted it all white just to make the space feel bigger. So here's our kitchen. We have plywood cabinets and drawers. Ben's dad actually made all of these cabinets from scratch. It was my idea to use copper for the handles, but he made all of this. And I think it just 
The rose gold is a really nice accent to our kitchen. And this is one of those farmhouse sinks that we got from Ikea. And we actually got a lot of stuff from Craigslist and eBay, like the faucet and the stove. So the stove was actually in the bus when we bought it. And I think that that's kind of where the green theme came from. We built this just to have more counter space, but it comes out. But it does have four burners and a decent sized oven. So that's really nice because we do a lot of cooking. So the wallpaper, I found that on eBay and I think that it really connects the space with the green and the pink and botanical theme. I found the light fixture on eBay and I actually had decided somehow that I wanted a magnetic spice rack but when I looked at them they were like $150 so I DIY'd this just with a simple steel plate and some jars with really strong magnets in them. So it's nice getting stuff off the counter and we're actually going to build some shelves on this side too and just have all of our mason jars there. I'm going to show you guys the rest of the bus starting with the shower room. We got this nice tile. We haven't driven with it yet, but it's half inch thick tile and it's not going to crack. My older brother helped me helped me tile this and he he thinks it should be it should stand up to the driving. But we split up the shower room and the toilet room so that we could have the refrigerator above the wheel well. So we actually have this sliding door and the refrigerator is still on order so we should be getting it soon hopefully before we leave but it's gonna sit here and we're also gonna have a shower curtain here just to help with water. We cut a hole in the side of the bus to add this polycarbonate panel window we're gonna have to treat it somehow for privacy, probably with a, a frosted spray of some sort. I ordered a 24 by 24 shower pan and we built sort of a tub basin, just higher sides on the shower so that we could wash the kids or Desmond, our dog. Mia can even fit in there. I can fit in there cross-legged, but not very comfortably. Will you show me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I can fit in the tub, <laughs> it just won't be very comfortable. I want to tell you a little bit about the floor material. It's actually salvaged cedar from my brother's neighbor's fence that they were taking out. He grabbed it, we milled it, routed it to have tongue and groove, and it really tied this together. We have Nora's bunk and Silas's bunk up here, both with, with sliding doors. It's not gonna help much with sound, but it's mostly for after they go to bed, we can have the doors closed and not bring in too much light into the space. You can see here, there's an owl with a forest. He really likes owls. Shimena, my brother's partner, actually painted this. She's an artist and she was really happy to have an opportunity to do some painting for the kids. We may not be living in this full time in five years, but if he gets too big for this, the couch actually will pull out to a full bed. It's not really good for a room for him, but he'll have a place to sleep. Down here, Mia actually painted the whales for Nora's bunk. So the, the mattresses and the doors and everything, that's all custom. My mom actually sewed covers for the, the mattresses and it's just five inch high density foam. Like I said, we separated the toilet and the shower because of the wheel well. We went through a lot of design iterations or options, um, figuring out how to deal with the wheel wells and how to get the bunks in, the bathroom, the refrigerator. We brought the toilet room over here. It's a little nicer having the vanity next to the bedroom. We have a nature's head compost toilet that Silas uses often. <laughs> he likes it. We have a double double sliding door. I need to connect these two that they so that they slide together and stay in the track. The double was so that they could both stack here on this small section of wall. This is our bedroom. As you step up, Desmond, our dog, will be sleeping here. It's kind of our staircase also. We thought it was nice to have this space that we could hang our legs off and also get up on this really high bed. 
Mia has pared down a lot. We kind of had to make some, some decisions on clothing. The rest of our clothes are under the bed and under this step here. Mia plays the ukulele and I'm hoping to learn how to play the piano. She knows how to play a little bit. The hobby to pick up on the road? Yes. <laughs> I'm really excited to live in the bus with our kids. I think they're gonna have so much fun. I think we're gonna have fun with them. The thing I'm most excited about with this journey is that I'm gonna be able to see the East Coast as well as finding a place for us to settle down. We eventually want to find a piece of land that our kids can grow up on and I think this will kind of be the next stepping stone to find a landing point. Hope you guys enjoyed this week's video if you did make sure to share it with somebody who you think might enjoy it and i'll see you next week with an all new video